you know, I've finally been having time to work on the uh, control panel for the closing lathe. And I've got, uh, just got finished uh, getting things mounted. I haven't bolted this down, but I, the VFD is going to go in there. I cut a hole in the back panel uh, so it sits flush and you'll see why. Uh, relay, fuses, the uh, little auxiliary terminal strip and then the main terminal strip. Uh, cool, extra cooling fan. Over here we have over here we have the uh, start stop switches uh, to power up the unit, not start and stop the lathe. The, that way it's one, it acts also as an emergency uh, kill switch. Uh, what it will do is, uh, and if there's a power failure, it will drop the magnetic relay out and not restart. Yes, the VFD has that feature also. Uh, but with so many power failures that we have here, uh, I'd rather not have to rely on uh, the electronic switching and the, and the programming of the VFD. I'd rather have a hard break, and that, that relay will give me that backup. We also have a uh, speed, control, speed control pot uh, tachometer display. So when this comes over... So as you see, when this comes over, the cutout in this panel and goes right around the VFD and the VFD, just the face of the VSD sticks out. And we'll have, like I said, this will be our stop, our power up button, speed control. And uh, that's about it. A um, little fan, uh, cooling fan will ex uh, exhaust down here. That's about it. Pretty simple. Uh, I had to make this auxiliary panel because the box, this is a Hoffman box, really nice box, but it had a few cutouts. Uh, there's a big old cutout for where the fan was. There's a hole on that side, a hole on this side. Uh, had, they had a bunch of, they had some holes cut over here for some controls or lights. Uh, uh, so I had to cut another big hole but and punch some other holes and to make everything fit properly. And uh, that was what I needed the 30 millimeter punch was uh, for, I used it for these here. And uh, that's about it. So this all uh, worked out pretty good. Uh, the box was, I don't really remember, but I got a dirt cheap because of the cutouts that were already in it uh, off of eBay. Uh, learn that. It's coming along. Uh, now it's, uh, Pretty much uh, put some more screws back in to bolt this panel down, uh, secure the pin, hinge pin back all the way in, and uh, start wiring it. Uh, I still have oh, a couple knockouts to do here for the cabling. Uh, power cable coming in, and motor cable going out, and the tr uh, pickup for the transformer. Uh, not the, the tachometer. The, so uh, I have a couple holes still to put in the in the bottom, but we'll just punch those. Hey, you guys! After uh, I don't know how long I had this closet in here—like two years. Been a while. Uh, I've got the uh, VFD panel constructed. I'm gonna do a couple more things. I'm probably gonna put a switch on the fan. The auxiliary fan and the tachometer. I have a switch, I just got to put it in. But uh, the lathe runs. Um, the power up button. This all acts as an emergency stop. But it's also the power off. And uh, it takes a minute for that to die down, but uh, due to the capacitors. But anyway, uh, this is the power up button, closes the relay. Speed control. I don't have the tachometer hooked up yet either. I have to mount the probe, figure out how I can do that on the spindle. But we uh, flip the switch here. Oh, unless I get it. I got it disengaged here. There we 
go. So uh, that that works. We're uh, we're happy. Uh, a few more things to do. Uh, I can't get the feeds engaged, so I don't not sure why on that. But uh, it's probably me just not operating things right. <laughs> uh, I have not running in back gear. Back gear and stuff works. A little bit noisy, as you, as you can tell. But the belt is okay shape, the, the main drive belt. But it, I think it, but it's been sitting here for two years, so it works. We're happy. And uh, we'll check lubrication in the head. I'll pull the top off the gearbox and we'll get figure out getting the rest of it going. Anyway, it runs. Thank you guys. Okay, I got things uh, a little more cleaned up. I cleaned the lead screw really well, lubricated everything, and uh, sounds quieter. Got the I figured out all the controls, and I'm going to make a cut on something. So this is just a piece of this old broken off pin, inch and a quarter. I'm just going to throw that in there, and. Got a couple of my uh, tools in here. Now this is a four position tool post. Uh, you don't see these too much anymore, but this one's not too bad. It uh, locks down with your the bolt going through here to the T-nut, but you can loosen this and spin it to the next position and it indexes in. So you can get uh, a bunch of tools in there. and. Uh, you know, figure out which one you want to use. So let's do a facing cut. I got one set up. Um, let's see here. We're going to be able to use the feed on that. Let's see if we're going in the right direction. Uh, it looks a little bent.
hardly any vibration. It, uh, the, that noise indicates vibration, and there's a little bit, but it's not too bad. And I haven't leveled it or anything. I haven't done anything. I just wanted to get it running right now. Well, not too bad for a piece of, well, that was a uh, heat-treated pin, but uh, not too bad. I cut it kind of fast as far as a speed rate, but not too bad at all. There's the first cut. We'll uh, be working on getting more of it working right, or more of it cleaned up. It really needs, I should take part the carriage. Anyway, thanks you guys.